So in the last video, we went over five different kinds of buffer circuits that you might find in your guitar pedals and how they would work. To continue with this idea, in this video, we're going to go over five kinds of boost circuits that you might find in your guitar pedals. The idea with this video series is to go over the fundamental building blocks so that when you build or modify or have to troubleshoot a pedal, you have an idea of what this part should do. So. This isn't meant to be an all-inclusive list, but this is just a list of five common boost circuits that you'll see and how they work. So let's dive in. Number one, bipolar junction transistor boosts. Also known as a common emitter amplifier, this is probably the oldest circuit of the ones that are on this list because these things were being implemented as far back as when germanium transistors were plentiful and silicon ones didn't even exist yet. Because these are common emitter, it means the output here leaves the collector pin of the transistor. This one is an example of an NPN transistor amplifier, which this circuit right here is actually kind of similar to the electroharmonics LPB1 pedal. We already covered how to calculate gain on transistor boost circuits, so I'll leave a link to that video below, but suffice it to say, this circuit not only works great as a down and dirty standalone boost, but also works well as the beginning of a lot of dirt circuits, to act as kind of a preamp before a clipping stage, which is something that you'll see common in a lot of pedals. And in case anyone asks, yes, this can also be drawn as a PNP amplifier, which have been utilized in circuits like the Rangemaster and the first half of a Germanium era fuzz phase battle. The only drawback to these circuits are the same ones that are on other BJT buffers, and that is to say that their input impedance is rather low, and in this case, they can only invert the signal. So if you want a non-inverting boost, you'll need to put two of these together to invert it and then invert it again back to normal. Number two, JFET boosts. Also known as a JFET common source amplifier, this one was popularized by J. Donald Tillman in his Tillman amplifier, as well as Dmitry Denyuk's uh, triode emulator paper, which eventually led to the Fetzer valve circuit. These circuits pack a lot of gain with a very few number of parts, so to keep the gain into the clean boost range, that is to say it boosts a lot, but as you hit harder things like power cords and have hotter pickups, that it still doesn't break up the amplifier. Uh, to keep it into that realm of a clean boost, you want to keep these resistor values rather low. So it keeps R2 and R3 down to like 2.2K and 1K, and you'll get a pretty good clean boost. Um, however, if you lower R3 or raise the value of R2, that will increase the general gain of the circuit. Of course, always you have a volume knob or something to uh, bleed off the sound to not let it break up anything in front of it, but there you go. Uh, this is actually, like before, an inverting circuit, so if you wish to have this become a non-inverting uh, amplifier, you'll need to put two of these together so that it inverts and then inverts again, which brings it back to normal. Um, we'll bring this up probably in another video, but when you do stuff like that, uh, if there's any like tone shaping elements to your boost, such as capacitors, uh, inverting it and inverting it again may not make it back to normal. It might be slightly off by phase, um, but we'll go into that more in another video. That's not really the, the scope of this one. But suffice it to say, that's the idea of when you want to bring things from inverting back to non-inverting, is just keep repeating the circuit. Uh, the, the advantages to this is just like any with the regular JFET buffers that we described in the video before, uh, they have really great input impedance and the output impedance is pretty good too. Let's do a real quick analysis here. So as you can see, I'm measuring a uh, signal here from 20 milliseconds uh, to 30 milliseconds and I have just a 100 uh, millivolt sine wave here going at 1 kilohertz. So, what we want to look at real close here is, as you can see, here's my input sign. So it goes from 0 to 100 to negative 100 to positive 100 millivolts. Now to get an idea of what the gain on this is going to be, if I click over here at my output, you'll see that I have my signal now goes from 0 to 120 and down to negative 120. So, and you can also see that it's inverting, the uh, green signal being my main signal and then the output being the blue signal. That's how we can see that this is an inverting signal, and therefore if we need it to be non-inverting, we'd have to do this period over again, which would shift everything over. So anyways, the, to get the idea of what the gain is, if we click on this output, 
and we wanted to get an exact measurement if we uh, were looking for exact, which we are. Um, you can use your left and right arrow keys to get the cursor to move up to the top. But because we know the thing is biased at zero volts at ground, and we know that it's going to go up to 120, where the other one was only going up to 100, you can kind of see right here, actually it isn't quite hitting 120. It's uh, getting close, but not quite. There's a little bit of a smidge there. So you can say, okay, well, I went from 100 millivolts to 120, and so the gain is 1.2, because you went from 1 to 1 1.2 volts per step. So that's not a lot in gain voltage, but what you can do with that information is if you look up uh, is it, uh, gain to dB calculator in Google, and it's, yeah, the second one that comes up here from this website. Uh, if you go to reference voltage, one volt, and then like I said, we go from one volt to 1.2 and hit calculate, that'll tell you what you got for your gain right here. So we've only gained 1.2 volts from one, we have a gain of roughly one and a half, a little bit more dB in volume. So there you go for that. All right, well, that's all there is to say about JFET boosts. Let's move on to the next circuit. Number three, MOSFET boosts. Also known as a MOSFET common source amplifier, uh, this was kind of popularized by Jack Orman's AMZ MOSFET boost, um, as well as the ZVEX uh, Super Hard On, the SHO. This works in a familiar fashion as a JFET, but has a lot of differences as well. Like the MOSFET buffer, we still have this Zener diode here to protect that gate pin, and we still use a set of resistors over here as a voltage divider to set the bias on the gate pin. One thing you also might note too, this isn't exactly a 50-50 split, uh, so it's not 100K and 100K, and you'll see when you try to do a analysis on the simulator here, why that is. If you didn't do that due to the properties of what's going on down here, the bias doesn't sit perfectly at zero volts, so we have to adjust by setting the bias resistors here to force it to sit at that zero volts bias. So, uh, how do we change the gain on this one? Uh, there's a lot of complexity here, but really the thing you got to worry about is changing the value of R7. As you increase the value of R7, the less gain the circuit pushes out. If you decrease the value of R7, the more gain it's going to push out. Like before, this is also an inverting circuit, just like that JFET boost, and it has similar advantage uh, advantages well, uh, uh, to what the JFET boost has, such as the input impedance is great, uh, the output impedance is good, and it's got plenty of gain. Anyways, let's move on to the next circuit. Number four, op amp boosts. These are found in a lot of circuits as they're small, and if you have a dual or quad op amp chip, using one of them as a buffer or boost to go into a circuit is pretty common. Here we have an inverting op amp boost. We've done a video on how to change the gain on these things and how they're set and such, so I'll leave that as a link in the description below to go into that detail. Now, op amp boosts can also be configured as non-inverting, like what we found in circuits such as the MXR microamp. And again, this is a common thing that you see in a lot of beginnings of circuits uh, in a lot of different pedals. We have a video on how the gain on non-inverting op amp circuits works as well, so I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. At this time, it's probably the most common form of a boost used, these op amp ones, uh, because when I say this is used as a building block, I say this is used everywhere. The only one that may be used a little bit more just because of its past is the BJT amplifier. But with these, I can see why they're used a lot. They're easy to come by. They're easy to control. They're very simple to set the gain on these things. Uh, and they have fantastic input and output impedance. So let's uh, take a look at one more type of a boost circuit. And we're going to do something a little bit different. What? Number five, CMOS boosts. Now this is one that you may not recognize by looking at it right here. LT Spice doesn't exactly have a great CMOS logic chip library built in, 
but you can simulate an inverter like a CD4049 uh, or a CD4069. Uh, you can emulate these with a set of two N-channel MOSFETs, a P-channel MOSFET, and a resistor. Uh, this pedal is more of a distortion fuzz maker than a clean boost, but I wanted to put this in here because you see this in a lot of building block circuits. This was popularized by Craig Anderton's Tube Sound Fuzz. Uh, later you see this in pedals like the Way Huge Red Llama and all of its derivatives. And if you're a bass player and you looked into some of your bass overdrives, Dark Glass uses this in a lot of their pedals as well as uh, in some guitar pedals like the Mad Professor Stone Gray Distortion. Now, I say this is a fuzz maker more than a boost because this circuit packs a ton of gain in a very small package. This right here is just one inverter. So even when R2 right here is set to a very low resistance, like 2.7K, it's already beginning to distort the signal and is partially out of phase. Let's actually take a look at that real quick. So if I go to run, Here's my input signal, and here's my output signal. Now let's lower this guy down to, like I said, 2.7K. And I go to run it. You can see that I'm amplifying, and I got a little bit of a slant here on the bottom swing. It's kind of pushing over to the right some, where the top here is pretty symmetrical. So even with a very tiny gain right there, it's already starting to distort a bit. And you can clearly see that we have a bit of a phase issue here. Uh, this isn't perfectly inverted, uh, perfectly inverted. This hump right here should be more over here, and it's not. Um, and that's kind of my point, is uh, this pedal is more of a fuzz maker because once you get this guy up to, I don't know, maybe 47K, it's going to start being perfectly inverted as opposed to being just slightly out of phase. But at this point, too, we've also amplified so hard that we've now started to clip the rails and we've started to get square waves which makes fuzz and distortion um, but yeah now you can actually see that the hump is more straddled in the center uh, as it should be and in that therefore in this case this is an inverted uh, amplifier which would make sense because this is a cmos inverter chip just to give you an idea but anyways, I just wanted to show this one because I know this is kind of a left field idea, but a lot of people have been using it in a lot of pedals for a long time, but no one comes to it when they say, hey, name some popular boost circuits. So there we go. So with that, that's going to complete my list of five different kind of boosts that you can use as a, as a standalone pedal or as a building block for other pedals that you're designing or troubleshooting or modifying. All of them have their pluses and minuses. They can be used as clean boosts, or they can be used for creating enough gain to create some overdrive, distortion, or fuzz, depending on the needs of the pedal. Let us know in the comments below as to which was your favorite, or if we've missed any, because I'm sure that we have. <laughs> uh, so that's it for this video. If you like these kind of circuit building block videos, press that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Lastly, if you want to help support the channel, please visit our website, which is www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and check out our kits, our parts, and our PCBs. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.